Hey guys, Allison here with Lofty Loops Yarns and I just wanted to record a short video showing you guys how I cast on for cuff down socks. So in this demonstration I will be starting the second sock to this lovely sock I just finished and I did knit these cuff down. I do have a couple uh, videos on my channel for toe up socks, which is how I start a lot of my socks. But every now and again, I like to switch it up and start cuff down, especially if I'm going to be doing a heel flap and gusset. So if you are interested in learning how to cast on for cuff down socks using double pointed needles, then keep watching. Uh, if you wanna hear more about this sock and other finished objects, then make sure to subscribe to the channel because I post a weekly podcast where I talk about all the things I'm knitting on, I show off what I finished, and all of that kind of good stuff. So if that's something you're into, uh, please stick around, but otherwise let's get on with what you came to see. Okay, first I wanna share with you that this yarn I am using is from Hawari Bazaar, and this is in the Leaf Jumper colorway. She is a fantastic dyer out of Dearborn Heights, Michigan, and I was able to meet her and pick up a skein of her yarn at Vogue Knitting Live in Minneapolis. During this demonstration, I will show you how to cast on to make this ribbed cuff if you wanna start your socks cuff down. And I especially like to do a cuff down sock when I am planning on doing a heel flap and gusset as I have on this sock and I stated previously. Just nice to switch it up every now and again. And some people completely prefer to do cuff down socks. So you'll need your cake of yarn. And here I am using DPNs. These are Knit Pro Zings in the size 1.5 US. And that is a 2.5 millimeter needle. And I'll leave a link to these in the description box below. I really enjoy them. I typically knit a on a US 1. However, I like the fabric that I'm getting with the 1.5. So I figured I would give these a go. So to start, you just want to pull out quite a bit of length on the tail because we're going to do the long tail cast on. If you're unfamiliar with that, I'll leave links to that down below as well. Some people like to measure out their length for their tail. I just pull much more than enough and go from there. So once you got your length of tail ready, grab your first needle and we're gonna go ahead and start the long tail cast on. For this particular sock, I figured that I would need 17 stitches on each needle, which makes a 68 stitch sock. So I'm gonna go ahead and using the long tail cast on, put 17 stitches on this first needle. I also want to mention that you should not need to pull too terribly tight when you're casting these stitches on. You want them to have just a little bit of wiggle room because it can make it quite fiddly when you go to knit the first round if these are incredibly tight and then it could also cause some issues when you go to stretch the stitches or the cuff over your ankle to get it up your foot. So here you can see I'm just counting to make sure that I do in fact have 17 on there. Once I get to 17, I will go ahead and pick up the next needle and get that going. This is the part that some find quite fiddly, so just take your time. And again, if you have to pull everything off and start over, you're not really losing that much time. But you wanna line up the second needle right next to the first one. And then I pull it up just about a half an inch and then continue casting on just as I was before, but making sure that I'm only casting on to that new needle and just acting as if it were an extension of the first. And you can go ahead and slide your stitches down just a little bit once you get it going. And we're gonna repeat the process of adding 17 stitches to this brand new needle.
Okay, I finished with the second needle and I adjusted the camera to kind of give you guys a little bit of a different viewpoint. So hopefully that helps a little bit. This is not the easiest thing in the world to try to record. So here you'll see I am lining up that third needle with the first and second just like I did. And I'm going to go ahead and start casting 17 more stitches onto the third needle. I do apologize if the casting on seems a bit fast. I was not planning on making a long tail cast on video as well, which is why I will leave links to some fantastic videos down below if you guys are needing a bit of extra help with that. Um, so I made this assuming that you guys are already capable and knowledgeable of the long tail cast on. And again, I'm just going to go ahead and count to make sure I have the 17 stitches on that third needle. And then I will start adding stitches to the last one. So I, when I knit on DPNs, I use four needles with my fifth one being the working needle. A lot of people will do everything on three needles using the fourth as the working needle. It's really up to you and your preference. If you only want to use four in total, then just make sure you're dividing up your stitches accurately in thirds instead of in fourths. And now we're back to normal speed once I have all those stitches on the needles. So if you take a look at your needles, you're going to see your stitches are stair-stepping a bit. And that's exactly what you want. And so I just slowly turn each one and so I make a square with them, being careful not to twist any of the stitches. This is like if you're used to knitting a hat in the round, you want to make sure when you join you're not twisting up those stitches. I find it helps me if I lay them down on a table like you just saw. Um, otherwise, if I've done a few of these, then I'm okay to hold them in my hands and finagle it a little bit so we have that nice square with all of the stitches either on the outside or the inside. Whichever way you want to turn them, it's fine. Just make sure that all of your little bumps from your stitches are facing either inside towards the middle or outside. Then we're going to go ahead and pick up the final needle. So for example, I am using the fifth needle because I have four needles with stitches on them. And go ahead and insert it into that first stitch and I grab the tail and the working yarn and I am knitting into that very first stitch. And I'll do a couple and then I will pause and double check that I have everything facing the correct direction so I didn't accidentally twist something up somewhere while doing that. And then I'm just going to carry on with my knit two, purl two, all the way around. I typically like to knit about the first six to eight stitches holding that tail yarn double with the working yarn. And that just gives it a little bit of extra stability when I go to weave in those ends at the end. It will already have been woven in, uh, for lack of a better term. And once I've reached the point where I feel I'm comfortable with it, I'll just go ahead and drop that tail yarn and continue working on with just the working yarn. And for the rest of this first needle and the remaining three needles, I'm just going to work in that two by two rib, again, taking my time because like I said, it can get a little bit fiddly on your first round. It might be a little bit difficult to get that needle point into that first stitch that you put on there using your long tail cast on. So just take it slow. And um, if you end up needing to rip it all out and frog it and throw it across the room, then by all means, just take a deep breath and come back and start over when you feel like you're ready. And again, I've changed the angle on you, so I hope this helps give a little bit of a different point of view. One thing I end up getting asked a lot about for people that 
aren't used to knitting with double pointed needles and admittedly it's one of the hardest things that I struggled with in the beginning was what do you do with the needles you're not actually working with and hopefully you can kind of tell here but I just let mine dangle and I'm not super worried about where they're at and what they're doing as long as they've still got the stitches on them and they're not uh, going to end up falling off or falling out or anything like that but it's really a struggle to kind of wrap your mind around just letting them hang there like that but I promise it gets better with time and eventually you won't even notice that they're just kind of hanging out and I believe it was on the Die Another Day podcast with Amanda and Christina where they joke about wrangling a porcupine and to be honest that's one of the things I think about the most and it kind of gives me a little bit of a laugh because you do in fact sometimes feel like you are wrangling a porcupine with all these pokey sticks. Again I have sped this up to two times the speed just to get through the last of the stitches for this first round so I can show you kind of what the very beginning of the second round will look like. And again, this is just two by two ribs, so I'm knitting two and purling two until I get back to the beginning of the round. Here we are at the very beginning of the round again, and I just wanted to quick show you uh, what it looks like with that double stitch that we created by holding the tail double with the working yarn. So you will count those two as one, and remember we did that for the first six to eight or so stitches. So you'll wanna just keep an eye on that and not accidentally knit them uh, separately, but you wanna knit those together if you held the tail double. Usually by the second round I can get into the groove, things are a little bit easier to work with, a little bit easier to hang on to, and so I'll just continue knitting two and purling two around and around and around for usually I go between 20 and 25 rows. It's really up to you, it's totally personal preference. Some people like a longer ribbed cuff, some people like a shorter ribbed cuff, 25 is usually my go-to and will give me, with my gauge that I knit at, about an inch and a half worth of ribbing at the top of my sock. I've gone ahead and sped up the video to two times the normal speed as I finish this second round. Um, if I didn't speed it up, we might be here all day and that would make for a really, really boring video. So feel free to continue watching and I will jump back on to conclude the video and do any last minute wrap ups. And here is what it's going to look like at the end of that second round. It doesn't look like much now, but as you keep working, it will definitely start looking like a little sock. 
Some people call it a mustache. I've been known to take a selfie or two with my little knitted mustache up in front of my face, but either way, we've got it rolling and this will be a new sock in no time. So I want to thank you guys so much for checking out the video and watching as I cast on for this second sock. No second sock syndrome here. And I want to remind you guys to go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Subscribe to my channel if you are interested in watching my podcast that I upload on a weekly basis and for any future tutorials that I decide to film and upload. Leave a comment down below again if you found it helpful and if you've used this. I love seeing that you guys are finding these videos useful and that some of you are knitting socks for the very first time. So again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. Happy knitting!